In this video, I'm going to give you the 10 most important KPIs I recommend whatever your business, your sector, the size of your company. We're going to talk about availability, fill rate, inventory return, excess, obsolete, inventory accuracy, lead time, occupancy rate, forecast accuracy, supply chain cost, and ABC analysis. And this is a full Excel with all the calculation you can download below this video. Let's start now. All right, so I really recommend to download this file because I'm gonna go really fast. Most of these KPIs are already explained with more details in uh, in my YouTube channel, uh, so I included also links if you can you want to check in this file directly. And before we start with availability, I just wanted to go back to the three pillars to define what are the most important KPIs. You want to track the service for your customers with service rate, availability rate, maybe the lead time. You want to track the cash you invest and mostly the inventory, the efficiency of your inventory and you want to track the cost of your supply chain. Okay, and in this video I'm going to focus more on what are the main KPIs, how to calculate, but of course this is not the full process and if you want to go to the full process uh, feel free to join uh, these, the SM analytics uh, method we have for the, the members of ABC supply chain. So the first one, availability, the most important one I feel with inventory turnover, very simple. You have a list of 10 products, for example. So you have a warehouse, you have a factory, you have a store, you have something with inventory, <laughs> a place, and you want to track what is the availability. Very simple, you have the status. Is it active or discontinued? You only want to track the availability on active products. Uh, if they are not part of your current range or catalog, you don't want to track the availability. So you want to know what is the available stock, not the physical, but the available stock. And then you have a very simple formula. If my available stock is more than zero, then 100%, if not 0%. So you have 0% or 100%, you can see for this one. These ones are not active, so no availability rate. And at the end, you have just the average of these 10 products. 63% is the average of this score. If you want to go deeper, just click on this link. You will have the full tutorial with all the details uh, behind these KPIs. And if you want to combine with more advanced dashboards, this is the one from SM Analytics. You can combine availability for the global level, for your brand, for your ABC codes, etc. Maybe a map like this one, but this is only uh, for the one following the full course of ABC supply chain. The next one is fill rate. So fill rate is a bit more advanced because you need to have the order from your customer. For example, or you are a supplier, you want to check with your, uh, your clients as well. Okay, so you need to have the quantity and the value of the order. You want to track what did you supply or what was supplied to you. So quantity or value. And then you have the fill rate or the diff, the delivery in full. And for that, you just calculate at the quantity supply or the value. I recommend to work with value. Uh, because if you only if you have a very expensive product, I feel it's important to uh, to consider uh, with the value. So you you just deliver the value divided by the 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 order, and you have a percentage. If you have a factory, maybe you want to focus on in, in quantities. I explain everything into this uh, specific tutorials, but this is just to give you uh, an idea. So you have the rate for every single item. You can include if you want conditional formatting if you go to conditional formatting very very useful to see quickly and very important when you want to track the full fill rates of your products don't do the average of uh, like availability you have to do, just take the totals so you have to divide the total quantity of value supply divided by the quantity of value orders and you have 74 percent of Fill rate. This is a very good one if you have the the order histories of your suppliers or clients. Okay, then we go to the third one: inventory turnover. So inventory turnover is very important. Why? Because you cannot only track the value of your inventory. If you have one million inventory but you sell one billion, it's great. But if you have one million inventory and you sell only uh, ten ten thousand dollars, it's not not great. <laughs> so that's why you need to see the efficiency, and for that. Uh, we need to calculate the inventory turnover ratio. You need to have the average stock, or if you don't have the average stock, maybe just the current stock you have today. 
you need to have the sales or the consumption. Sales if you sell something, consumption if you have a factory and you have components or raw materials. And then you just divide, very important, use the same valuation between your stock and your sales or consumption. So it could be the cost price, the, co uh, the COGS, the sales price, but use the same valuation. And then you have to divide these two. So you divide the sales by the stock and you have your stock turn or inventory turn. And this is 30 days for this one. You only sell, you have 100 of inventory average and you sell one $100. So the total uh, stock turn is one year, 365 days, which is not great. Okay. So you can see it really, it's really important to see the difference. It's not based on the value, but on the, the efficiency. And this one is terrible because you had more than uh, two years of uh, almost two years of inventory. Okay. You can also use the number of cycles. I explained this in these full tutorials, but this is just to give you, this is one of the most important KPIs, whatever your business, you should use it all uh, the time at the micro level, product level, and also at the global level. Don't do the average. You do the total of your sales and consumption divided by your average stock multiplied by the period. Okay. That's it. We go to the fourth one. I'm going a bit fast, but I want to be efficient for you guys. Obsolete and excess or slow, slow, uh, slow moving and obsolete. In this one, you need to have the information of uh, what if your product obsolete or discontinued. This is the same. Uh, you want to know what is active, what is not active, what is obsolete stock. So it could be like a starting date and an end date could be like you are in summertime and uh, winter, it's uh, winter collection. So you don't want to have the summer collection and you need to flag them. You flag them, then you have the value. And once you have the value, it's very simple. You do a pivot table and the total of your obsolete is one plus 3,000. So you have 4,450 divided by the total of your inventory. So at the end, you have 10.7% of obsolete inventory. Okay. So this ratio is very important to track every week, every month and make sure you don't, uh, you don't have a crazy value or you can also compare to your industry. It's very different between uh, fast fashion, food, or uh, for example, the car manufacturing. Uh, but this is a ratio you should really uh, check as much as you can. And you can combine with what we call slow moving or excess. Uh, they are not necessarily obsolete, but they have too much inventory. And for that, I explain everything in these tutorials, but you will define what is your maximum uh, inventory you want and you will define them as excess or not. So for example, this one has 90 days. It's defined, it's more than 70. So this is excess inventory and you can flag them and track them. Okay. <laughs> I go to the next one. So the next one now is inventory accuracy. So whatever you have, for example, you have a where you have a warehouse a, a store or a factory, it's very important to have the most accurate inventory, because if you don't have an accurate inventory, you are not supplying the right quantities. You don't know how to replenish the stock. If you think you have 10, but you have zero, or like this one, you have five, but the reality is you have zero, you cannot replenish. So you have, you're going to miss sales. You're going to lose a lot of money as well. So you need to track the quality, the accuracy of your inventory. How do you do that? Very simple. You, tr you just check what is your like uh, IT uh, stock in your software, like could be a WMS ERP. And then you check. So you do inventory check, stock tech. Uh, I've done a lot when I was a student uh, 15, 20 years ago, uh, late at night. And you just say, okay, I have 10, I found 10. Great. But this one, 20, mm, 18, this one, five, zero. So you can see that they're not accurate. And at the end, you can use all this information. You can check the gap in quantity, the value of the gap. But what will be important just for, to start as a foundation level is just to track the accuracy. So what is the accuracy is like just if you have the same quantity, 100%, if not 0%, okay? So it's like availability, 100%, 0%. You just do all of them and then you have the average and you can see my average accuracy up is 50%. So only 50% of my inventory uh, is accurate and you can check the gap and the total of the gap and you can check my Excel file if you want to go deeper. But this is very important to track this uh, KPA, whatever your business. Okay. 
Lead time now. Lead time as well. We all have lead times, right? I'm going to give you a very simple example. Between China and um, a warehouse in Los Angeles, you just have to have all the others with the date and the quantity and the value. Then you need to have what was the contract delivery date and what is the real delivery date. Okay, you were supposed to deliver me the 3rd of March, but at the end you deliver me the 13th of March. So my contract lead time is 30 days, but at the end you have 40 days. So how do you calculate the average lead time? You just do the difference between the real delivery date and the other date. You see, it's very cool because you can use a, you have a number of days at the end. And what is your average lead time? You just average all your orders from the specific suppliers, for example, or clients. And then in this one, you have 37 days and you have an average delay of 7.4, but I won't have time to explain all of it. You can check this full tutorial uh, below if you want. And you can also, uh, if you want to track the delivery on time, you can check as well uh, this one, but this is really the basic about how to track lead time. Next one, and you can also, yeah, you can track many lead time with many dashboards. Uh, the next one is occupancy rate. So you have a limited capacity in your warehouse, in your factory, in your depot, and you want to make sure you track it. Because if you don't have enough space, game over. You cannot do anything. You cannot supply anyone, any customers. So it's very simple. You have your total capacity and your capacity is not a number of quantity, but it's a number of like location in your warehouse, for example. Uh, it could be sector like like voluminous, uh, like big products, dangerous products, small products, etc. like in Amazon. I'm going to do a video about Amazon very soon. You can uh, let me know in the comments if you want to see this one. Uh, so you have the total capacity, you have the capacity used. Uh, so how many locations are used at least by one product? And then you just do the occupancy rate. So you just divide capacity used by total capacity. You have the percentage per sector and you have the total 77%. It's very important. I give you an example of my SM analytics program. Um, capacity, occupancy, yeah. Occupancy rate, you can see per sector. It's very good to see. You don't want to have 100% of uh, occupancy uh, because you cannot move anything when it's completely full. So you want to be around 80, 85% capacity occupancy, uh, but you don't want to be too low as well because you are spending money for nothing. Okay. So occupancy is a very important one. The last two, no, three, we have forecast accuracy. So forecast accuracy is the most uh, complex one. Uh, first of all, you need a forecast. And if you have a forecast, an accurate forecast, life is so easy in supply chain and operations, right? But you probably don't have a, an accurate forecast or so not even a forecast. <laughs> so if you don't have forecast, you can check. We have many tutorials and free course for that. And also we have a program called Forecasting Expert if you want to become an expert. But before that, you need to track also the forecast accuracy. And you have many, many methods. I'm not going to explain all of them. You can check my free tutorial. I recommend to use this one, the what we call the MAE, the mean absolute error, or the MAD, the mean absolute deviation. This is the same. You want to have your forecast, initial forecast. You have to define, okay, what was the forecast one week before, one month before, two months before. I explained everything here. What was What is the real demand? Then what is your error? What is your absolute error? I'm not going to use this one today. And at the end, you have your accuracy per product. So it's just the uh, absolute error. The So absolute means not negative, divided by the demand. You can check the formula. And you have the error per product. But if you want to have the total accuracy, not, um, not don't do the average, because the average is the what we call the map. Because if you have a very important product, you won't be uh, considered as much as uh, necessary. So you want to use the MAE. And for the MAE, you just divide, if you check the formula, the absolute total absolute error divided by the total demand. And you have your percentage of error or your accuracy is just one minus uh, the percentage of Error, my friend, you can also do pivot table and you can go way deeper. For example, this is my one of the demand planning uh, program I explained. You can have the, the forecast accuracy per per week, per demand planner. You can focus on the uh, ACOT, for example, etc., etc. Next one, my friends, supply chain costs. So the supply chain costs, 
It's very important. <laughs> Usually you do that with your CFO, with your financial team. Uh, I was doing this as a supply chain director, of course. I was tracking this number every month. And I'm not going to give you full details. Maybe I do another video. Let me know in the comments if you want to see more details about supply chain costs. But you want to know like what are the main pillars of your supply chain costs. Warehousing, for example, uh, it could be a 3PL or not. Transportation, uh, it could be inbound or outbound. The, what is the inventory cost? Because inventory cost is not only about uh, the cost of money or the cost of storage. You have uh, like insurance, you have the cost of promotion or of destruction, etc., etc. I recommend you maybe to watch this video about the, the inventory cost. Uh, you have the, uh, the, t the administrative, what is the, you know, all these people taking care of your inventory management and forecast. So all of it. And then what is important for me as a supply chain director and executive, when I'm going to present the numbers, you want to check your numbers um, versus last month. And also you have a seasonality, but versus your percentage of revenue. So it could be like, okay, the, the cost of my supply chain is 30% of my revenue or per order. My average cost is $6.50 um, or per quantity. So I like to track this one at the total level and per, for example, you can check for only for warehousing or for transportation, etc., etc. So this is very efficient to have these numbers because you can also show the cost, but also the value of the supply chain. And we're going to publish very soon a, a video about the value chain. Uh, let me know in the comments or maybe uh, this video will be released when you watch this video. So that was about the supply chain costs. And the last one, this is not a KPI but this is a combination of KPIs. So I always recommend to do an ABC analysis. I'm talking about this one a lot. You can watch this video, very simple video to start doing one like this one. And what is important for me is to focus your energy on the most important products of your company. And that this is the one that sells the more or with the more profit, right? And once you have this ABC analysis, you can tra start tracking, for example, the availability rate only for A codes or the fill rates, or the stock turn, or the, for example, the inventory accuracy or the forecast accuracy. Okay, so I really wanted to finish by this one because you don't have time to fix everything. You have so many things to analyze, but you want to focus on what's going to make a difference today, tomorrow, and the next few months. Okay, so combine the ABC analysis with all this one and you will have much better uh, results and you can go back, for example, to this dashboard and say, oh, I want to focus only on A and B codes. And you can only check this one if you know how to create this kind of uh, tools, uh, if you want to go deeper with us. Okay, so my conclusion of this is keep it simple. You don't have that many KPIs. They're not very, very complex. And once you have them, try to simplify your process to make it as automatic as possible. And that's what we do with ABC Supplation School. <laughs> we teach you how to do it not only for 10, but for 10,000 or 100,000 products. And uh, we're going to focus not only on, okay, what are the KPI, but really to understand the full picture, uh, selecting the right one, extracting the data, because most of the time you have a problem with data, not clean, not structured, and you want to consolidate, but it's very complex or your ERP is very slow. Uh, so we're going to explain to you with real example how to do it, how to measure, how to create an amazing dashboard to impress uh, your, your team. Uh, how to automate everything on Excel or BI, how to analyze and focus, because you don't want to have KPIs just for KPIs. You don't want to become an expert uh, just wasting your time <laughs> analyzing, but you want to have the right analysis to focus on the most important to, um, to deliver uh, short-term, but also sustainable results for your uh, company. So that's what we do with ABC Splashion with all the course we have. You can check this one or all the, the one. And yeah, thank you for watching me until the end. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this file. Uh, there is a lot of value uh, that you can use uh, immediately today. And if you are curious, you can check below this video. And we have uh, free courses. We have full method to certify you as an expert. And you have also assessment. We have many, many resources that you, we can uh, really support you uh, to become an expert and leader in supply chain. Thank you. If you have any questions, leave me a comment. Give me a like and I see you for another video.